friends! Hello! Hi! How are you? Uh, I'm doing amazing, sweetie. We're living, we're breathing, we're loving. Um, hello! So today we are doing a get ready with me talking about the Jaclyn Hill video. I feel like first, wait, before I even jump into this, I just want to say, um, I'm going to get a little emotional and a little sappy for a second, but I know that you guys love me enough to deal with it. <laughs> Basically, I just hit 8,000 subscribers as of like this video. I think I hit it like 10 minutes ago. I'm like a little emotional. I don't know. It's, I, it, I feel like it's silly because I know that that's not that many subscribers for some people like some people that's like on the scale of YouTube that's very small but that is four times the amount of people that live in my hometown because um, I come from a very small town so to know that four times the amount of people that live in my small town now are subscribed to my YouTube channel is really mind-blowing <laughs> um, and crazy and when I started this whole YouTube like journey thing. I don't know if I could call it a journey, but when I started this whole YouTube thing, I really never anticipated this happening. And um, the fact that it has is just like amazing. So, and like, it's just been phenomenal. Um, so thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. And I honestly have like three different giveaways I have to do because by the time I hit six, then I was right back at seven and now I'm right up at eight before I've had time to do anything. So hopefully next week I can get my stuff together and do a few giveaways for you guys uh, as a thank you because I'm just so excited and happy. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the Jack Liddell stuff. I didn't want to be too sappy for too long. Also, I'm doing a get ready with me. If you couldn't tell, this is all I do. <laughs> By the way, if you have not checked out my latest video I posted on Friday, I posted a video called trying to look like an Instagram model. And it's honestly the one of my favorite videos I've ever made. So after you're done watching this video, if you're really bogged down and tired from all the drama uh, and you need a laugh, go check out that video because I'm I'll have it linked at the end. I'm so proud of that video and I want everyone to see it. So let's talk about Jaclyn Hill. I wrote notes. Um, so Jaclyn Hill dropped this video last night and I was actually at my friend's house and I was like stop everything <laughs> and I sat there for 44 minutes I think how long the video was. Sat there for 44 minutes and listened to her speak and I wanted to take notes because it was a very long video and I wanted to just like remember everything I'm basically going to break up my talking points on this into four parts which is essentially the four parts that she talked about in her video because I feel like she kind of broke hers up into four different segments and I have some thoughts on all of it if you're here to um listen to somebody like drag Jacqueline that's not happening today here on this channel. I am not going to drag her. I have my issues with her, um, but I also do like her. So I'm not going to drag her. If you are here to listen to me, like, kiss her ass, uh, that's also not going to happen. And this is also not the video for you. Sometimes I really feel like I have to explain that when I'm talking about these, like, more bigger influencers. Because I think people click on these videos either expecting one or the other. And if you're new to my channel, um... I'm just very much, I like to see things from both perspectives and both sides, and I like to have conversations with you guys about like what sides you think are right. So let's just jump right into it. <laughs> I think the first part of the video was really, really focused on the vault collection. She kept tweeting like, oh, the vault is perfect. Everything about the vault is perfect. I know that with 100% certainty, like this vault is perfect. People who criticize it are just haters because my vault collection is perfect. Um, and it's not, it's not. I own, I own the vault collection. And while I like certain aspects of it, like the, the purple palette, the bling boss, I believe, bling boss palette, I really, really enjoy it. I love that palette. Ring the alarm, I think it was, the all red palette. I'll just show you guys. I thought this palette was okay. Some of the shades were patchy. Some of them weren't perfect. I thought, I have a whole review on these if you want to see it. I thought this palette, again, not, not really good. I didn't think it was very good. I didn't think it was worth the money. Um, this is my favorite. I use this all the time. I love the purple palette. I think that one was fantastic. And then this one was really not that great either. The greens and the yellows were really lackluster. The shimmer shades were okay, but they were kind of weird. Like this palette, these, this collection was not perfect. And I think the mistake she really made is she's trying to convince me that I'm getting like Pat McGrath quality for $15 eyeshadow palettes. The thing I like about Morphe... Oh my god. I'm already throwing things. I literally I The thing I 
actually like about Morphe is that they aren't amazing, super great quality shadows. I look like a ghost. What is happening? Why do I look like a ghost? <laughs> they work well, and that's all they are. They're not like these revolutionary, amazing shadows, and I hate that she pushes that. Something that I thought was like really interesting was when she's talking about what happened with the first launch, how they had to push it back, she talks about the fact that Linda came to her. Linda is the owner of Morphe, for those of you that don't know. Linda came to her basically and said she was the one that pulled the vault collection and Jacqueline was crying and she was very upset. But the narrative that Jacqueline has been pushing this whole time, which it's, the, the thing about this video was there are a lot of inconsistencies to a lot of things and I think she was trying to, I'm gonna say this right up front, I think she was trying to paint it like, well, this is the truth. And it was just kind of a bunch of half-truths that also didn't make a lot of sense together. But she said Linda's actually the one who came to her and said they were gonna pull the pallets. And Jacqueline was so upset. But the narrative Jacqueline had been spinning before was like Jacqueline went to them and said they had to pull the pallets and Jacqueline was the one that made the decision. But in this video, she's saying Linda made that decision. So again, just an inconsistency to think about because I think when you're someone like Jacqueline Hill, who, and I, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but when you're someone like Jacqueline Hill, who is right now in a lot of hot water with a lot of people and a lot of people don't like her because she is so inconsistent with what she says and because it seems like she either embellishes the truth or just flat out is lying about the truth, you need to, when you're doing a video like this, you need to be 100% honest. And if there's an inconsistency in what you previously said, you need to say, I know I said this, but this is what actually happened. She does that though with the next thing she says. So she drops probably the biggest bombshell. I was literally at my friend's house and she said this and I was like <laughs> because I was so shook that she actually said this out loud. Apparently you guys. Shocker. Not all of the millions of dollars worth of Jaclyn Hill Vault Collections palettes were destroyed. I know, I know, I was shocked too. I was, I'm just kidding. Nobody was really surprised by this. I was more surprised that she just like admitted to it finally. But here's the thing. I still don't think she's telling the truth. The more and more that comes out about this whole drama with the vault collection, the more and more I'm starting to believe, um, cause at first I was like, well, why would they lie about that? Like I was one of the, I think I was pretty naive and thinking that like, why would Jacqueline and Morphe lie about making new palettes? Like what did they benefit from that? But I am now starting to think that because she's been this whole web of like, they're quarantined and we are research, we are going through every single palette to figure out what happened. Again, I'm gonna go back to my previous statement. Morphe, as a, as a, as a whole, is a very drugstore-like prices for their company. Morphe is not like Anastasia Beverly Hills. They're not, like Morphe is what it is. I don't know why they pretend like they put so much time and effort into everything they do. Morphe does not actually really care about all of this. She's making it sound like money is not Morphe's first priority, but you're gonna try to tell me that Morphe is the one cosmetics brand that just happens to care about their customers so much they're gonna lose millions and millions and millions of dollars on these Jaclyn Hill palettes and spend millions to rent out a warehouse to store them in so they're quarantined so that way you can like it's it just doesn't make sense it's just not plausible she never brought up the thing that I've seen a lot online which is that Ulta employees are coming forward and saying they never got new palettes all of the palettes they put out on the floor were the palettes they received before the cancellation like they never there was never an order to take back those palettes like all of the ones at Ulta a lot of people are saying are the old ones a lot of people are saying maybe they just like were halfway through production when this happened so they didn't scrap all of them but the newer ones that they did make which is why some of like I'll show you my batch codes I know the batch I'm gonna get in the batch codes in a second but all of mine say v2 actually yeah so all of my palettes say v2 on them which is like the big thing I guess we can just get into that right now because that's kind of the next thing she talked about so she says v2 does not mean vault 2 or version 2 but then I literally wrote <laughs> On my paper, I was like, so V2 means what? Because she couldn't actually give an actual statement about what V2 meant. Like why some of the palettes had V2 and not. She said it didn't mean version two, but then she said there were ones coming out with version three, version four, version five, which doesn't make sense again. Like, I don't really know. I wish I wish she had like talked to her when she talked to her person who was in the because I don't I don't know if they would blatantly label things like V2 as like version two. Like I don't know if they would they're that stupid, but like they could be. But also if she did genuinely talk to a guy 
who was in charge of the batch numbers and was in charge of making that happen. I kind of wish she had like had him on the phone and recorded it or had him talking specifically about what all of this means because a lot of people are very angry and very upset because their palettes don't save V2. Their pa and I got mine from Morphe. I didn't get mine from Ulta. And I'm hearing a lot of the Ulta ones don't have this V2 on it. Um, it's sketchy. It just looks sketchy. If you're gonna like go to the trouble of explaining that even a little, you can't just say, oh, it doesn't mean version two. It means, well, I don't really know what it means because that's she, she, basically what she said. Like she was like, I don't really know what it means. And it's like, that's fine if you don't know what it means, but you need to get somebody on your channel who does know what that means and explain it to everyone because we're angry and we're confused about it because it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really add up. The other thing she said a lot in this first part that I was so confused about, and I don't know if I'm the only one or if I'm missing something. I I know Linda isn't technically in charge of Morphe anymore. Like I think she's sold, but she obviously still plays a part because Linda was mentioned like 45 times in this video as making decisions. She kept being like, Linda and I are like investigators. We are investigating what's going on in this situation. And I'm like, if Linda is making all of these decisions and if she's high enough up at Morphe to be making decisions like recalling a million dollars worth of pallets, why does Linda have to investigate anything? Isn't she the one making the decisions? Like, why is there an investigation going on? Everybody works there. The same people who are like investigating are the same people making these all, all these decisions. Like, are they trying to investigate if the factory screwed up? Like, it just sounded weird that she kept being like, we are investigating, I'm investigating on social media. And it's like, okay, that's all fine, but shouldn't you just know what's going on? Like, shouldn't you just be aware of what's happening? In, especially Linda, shouldn't she just be aware of what's happening in her own company? Maybe I don't know all of the ins and outs of like how this type of thing works. But to me, if I was the CEO of a company and something didn't go correctly and I wasn't able to just figure it out because I'm the one that made the decision, it doesn't make sense. All that she's saying about this vault collection, I know this was supposed to be like a let's talk my truth style video, but dear God, does none of this make any sense to me. I am I am probably more confused now than I was before she made this video. But the next thing she kind of talks about, she kind of segues into like talking about her life and like what's going on in her life. And she talks about the vault collection and how it's being portrayed on social media and says that every single person who has said that it's bad that she's reached out to personally to get it resent has then been like, oh, just kidding. Like, I know I said it was bad, but it's actually amazing. And like, they said that. At the very beginning of the video, she acknowledged that there were problems with the vault and acknowledged there were inconsistencies and acknowledged what people had been saying about them. But then she went on to say that actually nobody really does hate the palette and it's just being misconstrued on social media and people on social media are just lying to get like retweets about the palette. How much time does Jacqueline Hill actually have to reach out to every single person who has been affected by the vault collection? Like who has not liked it? How much time does this girl have? I know it's not enough time to reach out to everyone who has not been satisfied. And then she talks about the 1% return rate, which is impressive if that's true. I, I haven't heard of a ton of people returning these vault. I think the problem with the vault, honestly, my personal opinion about the vault collection, it's not that they're terrible, awful palettes that are unusable and warrant to return. When I re return makeup, it's because to me, it's like, it's unusable. I am never going to use it. There's no point in me keeping this. If something has to be like bad for me not to return it. I don't think anybody's saying these palettes are, I think some people are probably saying it, but I don't think everyone is like, oh my gosh, these are the worst palettes, they're unusable. I think they just don't live up to the hype of the first Jaclyn Hill palette. And I also think Jaclyn Hill herself with this launch really made it seem like these were going to be the most per it's like it's like when subculture came out and abh was like this is the this is the sister for the modern renaissance and then everybody got it and it wasn't it was nothing like the modern renaissance it was completely different and some people still like that palette a lot of people actually really like that palette but people hated it and people talked badly about it not because it was necessarily terrible like i personally didn't like it but a lot of people have a lot of luck with it not because it was terrible but because it was different and it was not marketed as being different it was marketed Marketed as being an extension of modern renaissance these palettes that just fell these palettes were marketed as being an extension of the Jaclyn Hill palette which she mentions in her video being one of the like most successful palettes of all time and she's not wrong like I truly think that is a staple in the beauty community as one of the most successful palettes in recent memory that eyeshadow palette I've seen it on tv shows I've seen it all over youtube so many people put it in favorites videos so many people still use it and talk about it all the time that was a really groundbreaking awesome eyeshadow palette so to market your vault collection as an extension of that and then to have it be a different style 
a different type of formula, different um, like shimmers and all of that. To have that happen is why I think people are so upset about these. So her saying like, oh, nobody returned it, so that must mean it's actually good. I don't think that's the case. I think it can still be like a just okay product. It's just not groundbreaking like the first palette was. It's just not the most amazing thing any of us have ever seen. She does kind of address the Morphe shilling that's been happening in a lot of her recent videos. And I guess it's good that she's now more self-aware of it. Um, I'm just not sure how she wasn't more self-aware of it before people started getting angry about it. Because I looked back at her channel and it's been like every single video she posts has either Morphe in the title or it's just like constant, constant Morphe. There's only so much you can take of one thing. And it's always like a new thing. Because first it was the Jaclyn Hill palette. And then she kind of took a break from YouTube. And now she's come back with this vault collection. And now she has the brush collection. And now it's always just something you need to be buying from Jaclyn Hill. And it's just a little too much. And one thing I do want to mention quick. This wasn't really about the drama, but it was something I thought was interesting. She talks about how she's been a lot more like laid back in her videos and a lot more um, just like kind of like not herself. And I have really noticed that with her videos as someone who's watched her for a long time and used to really enjoy her content. Um, I have noticed that in some of her videos. And she does say that having an editor has changed that for her. And this is, this might be like not a popular opinion or a correct opinion, but it's something I think, I think and there's, this is no shade because I think it makes sense for bigger YouTubers especially. I think it does make sense for them to get editors because they're very busy and, you know, editing takes a long time. It takes a really long time and it's a lot of work. But I'll say for me, if I ever were to stop editing my own videos, I truly think that would mean that the passion for me is just gone. Because, and this isn't shady towards anyone because it makes sense for them to have editors. But for me personally... That's like part of the fun of this. Editing your videos, I know some people hate it, but editing videos is like part of the process of being a creator. Like it's part of the job description. It's part of what you need to do is edit your videos. And it's kind of a personal thing. Like the way I edit my videos is very, very different from how other people I know on YouTube, other content creators edit their videos. And that's what makes us all kind of unique and different is that we all have a different sort of editing style. Because at the end of the day, especially with beauty YouTubers, we're all kind of talking about the same things. So if you don't have that different sort of spin or if you don't have your own personality thrown in, it really doesn't make as much sense. It just doesn't. I feel bad for her that she's at, I do, I, and I know this isn't popular to say you pity someone who's a millionaire, but I feel bad for her in the sense that I feel really bad that she has lost that passion for YouTube and she has lost that creative feeling. What she described as what she used to feel when she would upload a video, which was that feeling of like, I'm so stressed with my life. I just wanna get in front of a camera and do something fun and like that is my de-stressor. That's exactly how I feel filming. And that's exactly how a lot of smaller creators feel while they're filming. This is why we do it. I, I do this because it's so much more fun than doing homework or stressing about school or stressing about life. And so it makes me really sad to hear that a person who has all the success that a lot of people dream of and it has everything she could want, makes me sad to hear that she isn't as passionate about what kind of got her there. Um, and it makes me sad that she does look at it like a job or like a almost like a commercial because her channel is basically a commercial at this point. It's just sad to see that happen to somebody. Sad to see somebody lose passion for something that's so fun like YouTube. Like it's just sad. I don't know. It's, it's obvious to me and it's obvious to a lot of people that she lost her passion. But to hear her say it was kind of sad. It was just kind of like, I don't know. It was sad. I've gotten a few things from Octoly lately for eyes and I'm just gonna play around with them. I've used this Sorme Cosmetics palette a couple times. It's their Warm Hues eyeshadow palette. I I don't not like this palette. I actually think it's really nice. It kind of reminds me of those little Naked Basic palettes, the like little ones, um, all combined together into one. It's not a bad palette at all, and it has some, it's a perfect like travel palette, it really is. I just think it's way too expensive. It's like I think it's almost fifty dollars, um, and I think for that price, it's it's just too expensive. It's just too expensive for the quality. It's, it doesn't match up. Like the quality and the price don't match up. If they would even lower this to like twenty five to thirty dollars, I think it would be one hundred percent worth it. But I think at a close to fifty dollar price range, it's just not worth it. Um, the other brand that sent me some stuff is Kaylin Cosmetics. They sent me some of their. These are called the Mineral Eyeshadow Powders, but they're like metallic pigments. They're 
beautiful are 100% something I, from Kaylin Cosmetics. 100% something I think you should look out for. Lovely Peach and Peach were my two favorites, but I also have a brown one called Milk Chocolate. Um, I also have two eyeliners and a glue from them. The glue works really well for the pigments, these particular pigments, but it doesn't work as well if you're trying to use it as like an eye primer. It's definitely like a glue. It's a glitter glue. It's not a primer. So I don't think you could use this as an eye primer, but I think for the pigments it works really well. And I didn't love the eyeliners. I liked the gel one, the one that goes under the eyes. I got it in a cool, fun little purple shade, and it was a nice little change of pace. It's still a good formula. I just am very partial to my Marc Jacobs eyeliner, so. But it's pretty close formula with the gel eyeliner, so it's not too bad. So I didn't mind this, but I didn't really like their little liquid eyeliner. It's Honestly, this is petty, but it, the pen is just too small. I can't get a proper, it's too small and too thin. I'll compare it to, um, let's compare it to my Too Faced sketch marker. This one's so much longer and thicker, and this one is very thin and, like, not as good. But we're going to play around with some of this stuff, and I'll show you how it performs, and then you can make up your own mind. So this is the part I feel like what everyone is going to be talking about, and it, the second she said it, I was like, man, she's got herself in some deep water now. She talked badly about drama channels. She said something that I thought was, like, a little weird. She basically said, like, I never watch drama channels. I don't take the time to watch drama channels but 95% of what they say is false. And it's like, okay, <laughs> let's break that down. Because I, I completely understand why influencers would not like drama channels because of certain drama channels. And it's not all of them. There are some, John, John Cookie and, and a few others, a couple others I could think of, who really take what they have and try and turn it into a really ugly, negative, nasty thing and try and say really horrible things about these influencers and try to talk badly about them and all of that. Um, so I get why for sometimes if you only see like the John Cookians of the drama world, I can understand why you wouldn't love drama channels. But my problem when people come for drama channels is that I feel as though sometimes they try to lump everyone together and that's not that's not fair, I guess, because that's like me lumping all of the beauty gurus together and thinking they're all just like Laura Lee and Manny MUA. And that's not fair to do either. Um, it's not fair to lump a whole community of people into just being negative and hateful when a lot, like there's people like me who do commentary. Me and I, I would say Karen Joy too. She does a lot of commentary and a lot of like discussion. There's people like Peter Mon too, who does a lot more discussion and he has a lot of messages in his video and kind of gives advice to people. You got like Rich Lux and, you know, Karina and people, T-Spill, Tawny, like all of the, Dustin, all of these people who kind of do like more of like exposed and like they do the research and they actually come out with really good facts. Same thing with Beauty with Ashley. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting anyone. But like they do a lot of research and they put a lot of effort into their videos and they try to make sure that like those, th you know what I mean? Like you have people like that. And just because drama channels are coming out with something that you disagree with or you don't like doesn't necessarily mean they're wrong. I know a lot of drama channels take a lot of pride and a lot of time in finding receipts, finding things that they think are correct and just not just trusting like one source. And at this point, I don't want to say it's like journalism, but it kind of is its own form of like, if you would consider TMZ to be like a journalism, it's the same thing. YouTubers want to be considered celebrities and want all of the perks of being like a celebrity, except for they don't want what comes along with that, which is criticism for their actions. Not everything they do is going to be perfect. And I think to attack a whole community of people just because maybe you don't like what they said about you or you disagree and then she tweeted out too like oh but I think Peter Mon is great and it's like well you don't you just said you don't watch them like you just said you don't take the time and she also kind of shaded them I think in the sense and shaded all of us and saying like well that's how these people get their paycheck is by talking badly about people and that's kind of insinuating the reason I didn't like that was because it was kind of insinuating that people like make things up to get a paycheck which does that happen sometimes and are things blown out of proportion Proportion sometimes for videos of course like we've all blown things out of proportion for videos like everyone's done it of course but does she use clickbaity thumbnails and like clickbaity titles to get people to click on her video and make make does the entire beauty community have that little caption where they're like thumbs down yikes what like um wtf we hate this palette and they make it seem like they don't like their palette in the thumbnail so that way people will click on the video and then they absolutely love the palette like yes you do that as well 
Of course, it's that's the name of the game. That's what YouTube is. And, and something that they know, something that beauty gurus literally know and talk about openly is the fact that negativity is something that gets views. Do I like that necessarily? No. But is that how it is? Yes. Am I more likely to click on like products, I, products for, like full face of brands that hate me over like June favorites? Yeah, because it's juicy and it's fun and it's exciting. Beauty influencers take just as much of advantage of that as everyone else in this community. And I'm sick of them making drama channels look like they're evil people for doing exactly what they do. Who did this recently? But like, oh, there's not to like call anyone out but there's a girl on here named lucia tepper lucia tepper um and i like her i like her videos a lot i know she had some drama in the past and i thought that was a little that's an example of a time i didn't agree with drama channels um was the kind of drama that she got put in and that's the thing you don't have to agree with drama channels just leave it alone like if you disagree i disagree with a lot of things i just leave it alone um, I disagreed with them about it, but then she made a whole video talking about how she hated drama channels and how awful they were and how negative and how they just lived to tear other people down. And I commented and I was like, no Tino shade, but you built your entire channel off of tearing down brands. And I don't see how that's any different than what drama channels do. Talking negatively about a brand to get views is the same exact thing. And, and a lot of the time too, and this is also, I'm going on such a rant here, but this is such a negative connotation as well, is that drama channels are like drama channels are just negative and nasty. I personally try to put a positive message into every single one of my videos and try to talk positively about something. Peter Mon does that. A like a lot of drama channel, Karen Joy, like a lot of these people put really, it's more of like to bring a conversation, to bring awareness instead of constantly being lied to, especially about things with consumerism. But regardless of what I say about Here for the Tea and regardless how I feel about her, the only reason I know what affiliate links are is because of Here for the Tea. She's the only reason I know what those are. Literally, she's the only reason. And other channels like her who took the initiative to tell consumers what was going on behind the scenes. I know they don't necessarily like that they can't pull the wool over our eyes anymore, but like, I'm sorry. I, I am so happy that I can be an informed consumer and an informed person. I'm sorry that that pisses influencers off because they can't get away with some of the stuff they used to do, but I, I don't feel bad. She also talked about her collab with Makeup Geek and all the stuff that went wrong with that. The way I see it is the same way I felt with the Gabriel Manny video. I am much more inclined to believe Makeup Geek and do believe that they probably did get screwed over in some way. But I also think there are two sides to every story. And I think that Makeup Geek is like not being as honest about the mistakes they made in that situation. Because if she, if Marlena, if Marlena really lost $1 million, um, like that's terrible. And I feel bad that she got screwed like that. But at the same time, you just from even the little I know about business, I would never invest a million dollars into a project that had not been contractually signed. Like no matter how good of a friend that person was to me, the second I got wind that something sketchy was happening, I would have pulled out. So from Jacqueline's perspective, she's basically saying like, the timing just wasn't right. It kept getting pushed back. And so I wanted to change the timing. And then she never really said how it ended though. She just said like it was supposed to be pushed back and then it got canceled and she was devastated. She also did say she does have personal issues with Marlena, but that she wasn't going to be talking about them, which I actually kind of respect. Like, I think it's good that even though they had a personal falling out, they're both being relatively civil about the whole situation. Um, but she basically talks a lot about how she, there was like a timeline issue. She was already working with Morphe and Becca and Makeup Geek, she thought, and this made perfect sense to me. Her reasoning for what happened made perfect sense to me. Does it still seem shady? And does it still seem like something didn't fully work out with Marlena and Makeup Geek and someone got screwed over? Like, yes, it still seems shady, but it makes a little bit more sense hearing her perspective being like, I had two collabs coming out. I was contractually obligated to a bunch of them and I couldn't necessarily, like, it made sense hearing it from her. It, it, it did. It helped just, not justify it, but it made more sense to me after hearing it from Jacqueline. Um, I think both people have a biased opinion on what happened with that collab. I think both people are trying to make themselves look better than they actually are. I think Makeup Geek is trying to make themselves look a little bit more like they're the victim in the situation than they might have been. And I also think Jacqueline is trying to make herself look a lot better in the situation, not as much of the villain. She made a really good point to me, which to me would be something I would think if I were to do a collaboration with someone, 
she basically said she was coming out with this 35 pan palette that was essentially going to be cheaper than her nine pan palette with Makeup Geek. So she said she didn't really know how to justify the prices because the nine pan palette was gonna be so much more expensive than this 35 shadow palette. And to me, I don't know why, but that just made so much sense to me. Like that, that should she have agreed to do anything with Makeup Geek then? No, she should have just said she wasn't going to do it. Like she didn't handle it properly. But the reasoning for why she didn't want to go through with the collab makes perfect sense to me. Because if I was in a position like that and I had the option to give you guys a 35 pan shadows that I thought were really good quality for a way cheaper price than a nine pan palette, I would do that. So that made sense to me. I don't know. That's just something. Then she kind of gets into the whole issue of like what everyone has been talking about, which is the beauty community. And she confirms that $60,000 is not crazy. I have a very unpopular opinion about this. Do I like the way that wealth is distributed in our country? Absolutely not. Do I think one person should independently have over like a billion dollars? Absolutely not. I do not think that. Do I think Kris Jenner's closet should be the size of an apartment complex, like an apartment that four people have to live in? Again, absolutely not. Do I not think that this is how our distribution of wealth should be done? I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. If it were my way, it, everyone would have a home and everyone would be fed and everyone had health insurance. Like if it were my way, that's how life would be. Um, it's not. It's not my way. And if I'm thinking about things as not ideally how I'd like them to be, but how they actually are, I don't think it's that insane that they're making that much money. It, it's insane, don't get me wrong. But again, I was not surprised to hear that influencers were making upwards of $60,000 per video. That was not shocking to me. First of all, the person that she said made $150, $150,000 per like shout out is Nikki Tutorials. Like, let's just be honest about that. I don't think that's crazy. I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think that's insane because I'm more angry and how much brands are making. Honestly, that's who I'm pissed at. I'm more angry that brands are making all of this insane money to be able to afford to do stuff like this. I'm more angry at the fact that brands are basically buying out people. Like that's what I'm not mad at the physical dollar amount because yeah, if, if, if I'm going to sell and make that brand like a million dollars, exactly what Jacqueline said. If I were to sell a product and make a brand a million dollars, I should be getting at least five to 10% of that income. Like I should, I should be, they should be, they should be getting that type of money. They shouldn't be getting taken advantage of because whether we like it or not, they are influential. They have influence. They have a reach. They are going to make these brands a lot, a lot, a lot of money and they should be paid for that. I, I truly think this. And it makes sense to me when you think about the large scale of how much brands are making, it makes sense to me that it would be that large of a number that influencers are making. With that being said, what I'm annoyed about is the fact that a lot of these are not being disclosed. I I don't really agree with the fact that it's like, oh, you don't have a, you have a lack of passion if you're not doing it for money. If Makeup Geek can't pay the fee that 10 other brands, brands can, sorry, Makeup Geek, you're out. I don't understand why if brands can't afford it, why they're forced, why they're going like bankrupt of trying to afford it. I don't understand why they're doing that when they could just be paying smaller influencers a hell of a lot less, honestly, just sending First Aid Beauty sent me their concealers and I've used them in like 10 videos already simply because I love them but also like they're getting a ton of free advertising out of me and I truly don't mind because I'm just excited that I got to try something out for you guys that something was sent to me that I didn't have to pay for. Like for most influencers that are my size getting free stuff is plenty to be able to talk about it like getting free stuff we're fine with that. But if you're a brand like Makeup Geek and you're saying that you're a brand that can't afford that Go to people you can afford. There's there's so many others. There's so many people who don't. What they're talking about, the people who are making that much, are like the top 1% of influencers. It's the same thing with athletes and like performers and actors and actresses. The people that make that crazy big type of money is like the top tier people. Not everyone on YouTube is making that. Jacqueline says in her video that she's only ever done one sponsored video and it was with Ulta. And I don't... It feels shady because like, I, I just don't know if I can believe that. Like, I just don't know if I believe her. Like maybe if since she was making so much off of her like makeup geek codes, Morphe codes, like maybe that makes sense, I guess. And then she talks about turning down like a million dollar deal. I don't think she brought up the million dollar deal 
because she wanted to keep us in the loop on like things. I think she brought up the million dollar deal because she wanted to be like, look at how authentic and real I am. I turned, if you have other influencers paying who will do $60,000 for one product, I turned down a million dollar deal. Like look at how relatable and passionate I am about makeup. And it's like, okay, okay. But like you're getting paid tons of money to shell out coats. So like you're not, okay, like chill. Anyway, <laughs> nothing about what she said. It felt like a lot of half truths and a lot of manipulation to make herself look better in a lot of situations that she's been criticized for. And it's just disappointing. I want my favorite smaller influencers to succeed and I want them to do really well, blow up, uh, have careers, be able to make money from this. I want that for them, but I don't want what happened to people like Jacqueline to happen to my favorite influencers because she was my favorite for a really long time. She was somebody I was like, she's so beautiful. She's so good at doing her makeup. She's so relatable. She's goofy. She's weird. Like, it's just kind of like me. And it's like, I could relate to that. And now it's not that I, I'm happy for her. Like when she showed her closet tour, I wasn't like, oh, she's showing off her wealth. I was like, wow, good for her that she was able to build something out of nothing. Like, good for her. I'm very happy for that she went from a girl working at Mac to basically owning the entire Mac store in her beauty room. Like, good for her. I'm happy for her. But in the same sense, I feel like I have been lied to about a lot of her collaborations. I feel like I have been lied to about a lot of things, really. I feel like she's not, she doesn't post anymore. She doesn't have that passion. I hope she can get it back. I'm not like writing her off as canceled by any means or anything. And it's kind of the same way I feel about a lot of different beauty gurus. I'm not writing them off as like canceled. I just am frustrated with who we have at the top right now. And this is something I wanted to talk about. This video is so long. I feel like it's already an hour of filming. I'm gonna have to edit it down a lot. But this is something I wanted to touch on. I, I made this whole video about like the beauty community and my thoughts on it. And I never posted it because it just like didn't, I didn't feel like I was properly saying what I wanted to say. I didn't feel like I was articulating properly the things that I wanted to say. So I'm kind of like mixing the two together, I guess. But I just feel everyone, there's been a big push to be like, well, who are your favorite smaller influencers who are people that are smaller that we can push up to the top we're not happy with who's representing us so let's that's great and I'm glad we're trying to get new fresh faces and new people I'm really glad we're doing that but nothing is going it's going to be the same thing they're going to get up to the top and they're going to be offered money they can't refuse because like what who would who would refuse that much money to talk for 30 seconds it's easy money why would you do that I think what needs to be happening is we need to be, I, I think a lot of, and this is probably unpopular opinion, but I think a lot of the blame goes to the brands. I don't think it's fair that these brands are tricking and manipulating people and buying people so that way that will buy their products. I, I would like to know instead of what influencer is charging $60,000, I would like to know what brand is paying $60,000 to have their products talked about. So I can know whether to trust reviews about them. I would like to know those things. And I know those are the things that are never going to come out because everybody wants to know if Nikki Tutorials makes $150,000 per review, which like, of course, I want to know that too. But I'm more interested in like the brands that I shouldn't be supporting necessarily because they obviously have too much money if they're to the point where they're just buying influencers. And I'm definitely not happy with everything that's happening. As a smaller creator and somebody who's just kind of stepped into this world, um, I'm terrified of getting bigger than I am. I want to, but I'm because I want to talk to more people and reach more people and um, have like a bigger community to talk to. But it's also terrifying because obviously you get to a certain point and it's something just changes. And I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to the people I love that are my other fellow small creator friends. Uh, but I also want us all to be successful. So it's a weird double-edged sword. I feel like this video is very inconclusive and weird. I feel bad. At the end of the day, I feel like for Jacqueline, she's a prime example of a beauty guru who it just is like, she's too big and it's just too much at this point. Um, this is an interesting topic and I wanna talk about this more on my channel. I might do a live stream later on like next week I might do something and kind of open up to you guys and have an honest open dialogue with you guys where you guys can actually talk back to me because right now you can't 
and I wish you could because I would love to know your guys' feedback on this. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm It's an interesting topic and I'm interested to talk about it more. I think there's a lot to unpack and I don't think, I think this is just the beginning of we're going to find out even more about the community um, than we ever have before. And I think it's going to change a lot of things, but I think some things are going to be changed for the better and some things aren't. But yeah. I love you guys so much. Everything I'm wearing on my face, my Patreon, my merch store, <laughs> my <laughs> my merch store, my Patreon, my Twitter, my Instagram, my um my everything. Everything will be listed down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. I am honestly so happy you guys are here. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you are here. Thank you so much for 8,000 subscribers. It's insane and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. I have a video for tomorrow. I love you guys. Bye.